Hey everyone, I am really happy to announce that I've just finished developing Plugify, my latest geometry nodes modifier. What Plugify is, is it's a variation on my last release, Decalify, and Decalify focused mainly on faked 2D normals, but with Plugify, I've completely redone the whole system so it inserts true 3D geometry rather than faking it. So let's show what we can do. First things first, let's just append our node group. So in the blend file provided under the node tree, you can append Plugify or alternatively add it to your scene via an asset library, up to you. So what we need to do now is add Plugify to our target mesh here. And let's use this plug here. Oops, sorry. Let's move this into position. So you just want to snap it and orient it to the surface here. And it's also important, you don't want it to be inside. You see the origin point here? You want that to be slightly outside of the object. Otherwise, you might run into some issues. Okay, great. Let's then select our plug. And there you have it. You've got perfectly inserted details into your mesh, which has been booleaned out and fused together and also deformed to the curvature as well. And it's cool because you can just dynamically move this detail around. So let's go over some settings here. So first things first, we have the Plugify vertex group. So every one of your plugs must have a vertex group for the border edges. So if we select this, you can see we have a vertex group called Plugify. So you can also rename that vertex group here, but by default, it'll expect this name. Cool, under the plug settings, we have subdivisions, so we can dynamically subdivide our plug. And you can see that we're getting a, a perfect blend here, despite the discrepancy of the uh, topology density. So we'll just leave that on one for now. We also have depth, so we can change the depth of our plug. Now merge accuracy, this is a setting that you use if your topologies are very different. So if I have a low res plug and the target mesh is extremely high res, I need more points around the border to fuse them together. So you can imagine what the setting is. Merge accuracy is if I take this, this edge here, there is five points one, two, three, four, five. There's five points in between here to look for nearby vertices to, to um, merge to. So if this mesh is extremely dense, you may need to up this to 10, 15, but generally five is a pretty good value in most cases. Merge threshold, this is the merge around the border, which fuses the two geometry together. So depending on your scale, you might need to change that value, but keeping it at small values generally works very well. All right, next, onto the projection settings. By default, it is set to raycast. So what raycast does is it will just project down the Z axis straight down. So you can see that when we get to this curvature here, it's getting a bit skewed and warped. This is because it's just projecting straight down from the Z axis. If we set that to nearest surface, it's gonna look a bit wonky at first, but the reason why it looks it looks wonky is because the, the decal is far away from the surface. But if we move it closer, it'll look quite nice. So nearest surface, we'll try and conform it to the curvature. Um, it'll warp it before projecting and it will essentially, yeah, it's better for curvature. But in general, I think that uh, Raycast does the job the best in most circumstances. So we'll just leave that on Raycast. And that actually raises a good point because remember, you don't want your plug to be inside the mesh. You want it to be just above the surface and you won't get any issues. Okay. Deform accuracy. So what deform accuracy is, it draws a grid around your plug. 
And if we have deform accuracy set, accuracy set to four, this means that we have a grid which this has been conformed to of uh, four points here. So obviously that would be very low, right? If you're projecting down onto smooth curvature and you have a very low res grid, that wouldn't be ideal. So 32 is generally a pretty good value, but just understand that um, the higher value that that is, the better results you're going to get. And lower values, the worse results. Okay, we have smooth artifacts. This is a really important setting here because, and I'll just set this to subdivide level one here. If I, if I turn this right down, you can see how nasty that topology gets. It's all warped and skewed and broken. And the reason for that is the normals of the target mesh are being used to push the plug in or out. But obviously normals are never perfect. You can see that there's slight faceting with every single polygon. So what this value is doing is it's smoothing out the target mesh normals for when it pushes the, um, the depth of the plug. So if I set this to 50 and we can just dial that up and down, you can see what happens. It just kind of softens everything out. So I think generally a value of 50 works very well in most cases. Okay, onto the UV and shading category. The expand normal transfer. Now what this is useful for is essentially right now we are transferring the normals around this edge, okay? But oftentimes when you have fused into um, a certain surface, you get, you know, edges which are really close to the border or you might get a few little tiny artifacts. Um, and when this happens, what you can do is you can expand that mask which is transferring the normals. So right now we're sampling around this edge, or so we'll just do points, we're sampling these points for the normals. If we expand it by one, we're sampling these points. And if we expand it again, we're sampling these points. So if you are getting bad artifacts on your normals, just uh, dial that up. Generally, you don't need to go higher than one and zero works for most cases, but just keep that in mind. It's just useful to have that setting exposed. Cool. All right, transfer UVs. So let's assign a material here and we'll set that to texture and we'll go to studio. Okay, so right now this is ticked off, but watch what happens. Now we are transferring the UVs from the target mesh onto our plug and that's all dynamic. And this is really useful if you're doing any kind of procedural shading and you don't want to get any seams uh, or disjointedness between the uh, where the seam, where the plug joins the target mesh. Here you can just set the names of the UV meshes for the corresponding geometries for the target mesh and the plug. And lastly, we have our material settings. So material A is the general material, right? So if we just turn back on our texture here, right now we have everything assigned to this checker, to this checker shader. But let's say I wanna add a new shader. Uh, let's say we wanna add this material here, but nothing happens, right? And the reason is because the modifier is expecting a vertex group to dictate where this material grow, goes. So by default, it's expecting material B as a vertex group. So if I add a new vertex group for, let's say, let's say I wanna give this particular um, piece of geometry a different material. We can assign that to material B vertex group. And then you can see when we come back, this has a completely different material than the rest of it. So currently in the modifier, I have exposed the option for a base material and two extra materials. I think that should be enough for most um, small little details. But uh, if you want more, get in contact with me and uh, we can talk about that. All right, let's add a few more plugs onto our mesh here. So I'll just revert this back, make it look a bit nicer. So let's grab this one here, 
we'll add it to this part of the mesh and I'll just turn off transfer UVs to make it faster lift that off the surface just a little bit and I'll add a new plugify modifier and I'll set the plug and there you have it we have two fused pieces of geometry on our mesh and I'll give this a nice subdivision as well another thing I want to mention is that if you choose the price variant with the kit you will receive my own personal plug kit as well and each of these all have the correct vertex group assigned to them just to save you on time everything is fully quad based with um, sub D topology so you can ensure that it will smooth and snap to any kind of curvature that you might need it's also been organized into a really easily manageable asset library just to make things a lot more streamlined and uh, easier to import into your scene and that is plugify in a nutshell you can pick it up on my gumroad and my superhive page in the description below. Thanks.